we had a uh, just a horrendous start to the game of of shooting, and um, I didn't feel like we were very talkative on defense either. So, which to me, when you don't have that kind of energy on defense, it will affect your offense a little bit. But I thought we had some great looks. 41 threes. I'd like to get that any night because I thought about 30 of them were wide open and probably didn't shoot it at a good enough clip. But we had some great looks to start the game and from V, from Carter, from Robo, from CJ. Everybody had a look and just didn't do it. Now, once we got rolling, we didn't get our heads down and those guys battled back. It was the best stretch of basketball that I've seen uh, Ahmed Ali played since he's been here, especially against an athletic team like that. There was a five to six minute stretch where he literally controlled the game at both ends of the floor. Uh, the defensive end of the floor being a pest and the offensive end of the floor hitting buckets, uh, getting assists. Uh, to have, I think it was seven assists and no turnovers in a game with those kind of athleticism. Uh, he had one of those special games and he is a, a special player that really grew tonight. Uh, the other guy was, was Jazz. I mean, um, his parents came out to the United States for the first time for the Cal Stanford series and then went on with us to Oregon State and Oregon. And he's just he's just continued to grow. I don't know if them coming here calmed them down or for them to finally get a chance to see Pullman and where their son's going to school. They've never seen it before. And yet you're here you just imagine your brother, if those you have sons and daughters, that kind of distance away, you have no idea what it is. But I think they they really gave the program, the community the staff, the team, their blessing while they were here. And I think it's just made him a, a, a just in a, put him in a great place. He's, he's a special player. And I've said it before, uh, we saw it in him early that, that he is very gifted and very skilled. He just needs strength. But he's that typical uh, European player that understands the game. And I thought he did a tremendous job defensively, uh, battling them at the realm. He got on the floor for loose balls. He shared the ball. He shot the ball. He played smart and he played hard. And he was very, very coachable throughout the game, too. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to see a chance for a young player like that start to grow because he certainly has uh, demanded and commands more minutes now with what he's been doing with his game. Uh, Robo held in there and, and hit some shots down the stretch of the game for us. Um, I think. It, any time for him is very difficult because teams are going to key on him that he really doesn't get a chance to put it on the floor and he ends up having to shoot a lot of jump shots. But uh, this game was about defense and energy. And when we played it, uh, despite their athleticism, uh, it gave us a chance to get back in the game. I thought there was in the first half we were down seven and turned the ball over a couple of times without having a point guard on the floor, wanted to play a little bit bigger. And, and that certainly cost us, missed a free throw block out which had never happened with veteran players on the floor just not communicating. And then I thought in the second half, we had cut it to eight with a chance to get it to six. And, and CJ had a couple of uh, uh, rebound putbacks. Thought he got hammered on one and <laughs> didn't get called. But that would have been a big point in the game to be able to do that because I thought the crowd was sitting right on them, on top of us and they were giving us tremendous energy to get back in the game. Ahmed was just sitting there and he, he, was, he was talking about when you guys scout these teams, you, it seems on, on film that you guys are as talented as any team you play and match up with everyone, but, but he seemed frustrated that, that, it wasn't, that it wasn't translating. Can, can you kind of explain where what kind of what, – What he doesn't understand and what I've tried to tell all the new guys that – and I, we spelled it out for them that when you come here uh, never being, having played at this level – and you've been so successful in the junior college level. Those guys are all successful players. The first thing they notice is that everybody is good. And you go through a preseason where uh, you can be a little bit more athletic, a little bit longer <laughs> than some of the teams you play, but you're not going to be more experienced. Hello, San Diego. Hello, Santa Clara. Hello, New Mexico State and everything. And it was a shock to them. <clears throat> I think Marvin Cannon, said, Marvin Cannon said it best when he says, uh, I had no idea that it was going to be this tough at this level. Uh, with A2, he, what he sees is that the difference is, you know, Washington two years ago won nine games. Those kids have been together since their freshman year. They won nine games. Now they're juniors. Now they're seniors. They're just kicking everybody experience. Those guys don't have a clue what that is yet. They have never been down to Arizona State in Arizona. I can't even begin to explain to them what that's going to feel like in that energy uh, down in those two buildings with those athletes coming at you. And then you look even at a USC uh, with their team of guys that, that have played and been at this level before. The continuity the knowing the offense, the knowing what we're doing, teams are going to sit on you more uh, when they know who you are. And those guys, they want to speed up the process. You can't do that. So uh, I really love A2. 
and I love the fact that they, they battle. But at the same time, it really isn't necessarily a, a basketball in terms of X's and O's and talent. It's an experience thing. They've got to understand – how important blocking out is. I can sit and watch you with tape what we've done before, and you can see where he's missed 80% of his block outs because he never had to block out in junior college because they had the biggest, strongest, most physical team. He can just stay out on the perimeter. You can't do that at this level. Guards have got to block out. you got to pay attention to detail. And if you are a veteran team, they will work you. And if you are attention to detail, yes, we're talented enough to stay with them, particularly on first possession, first rotations. <clears throat> but if that rotation goes a couple times – and you break down where that junior, senior, or more experienced player, he knows they're going to get you, and they're going to get you. Uh, our problem has been the continuity from freshman year to senior year of keeping guys here and getting them skinny guys to big, strong guys. Hello, Robo and, and, and V and things like that. Jeff, excuse me, Ike and Josh were pretty good that way, but they were playing with Connor and Charles. Charles did the same thing. It scared me to death my first year playing at this level. Then he settled down his second year. So as good as A2 was in the game, A2 was, um, he, he has tremendous confidence and stability. Uh, I think what he's really talking about is sharing the ball, playing together, playing defense, blocking out all of those little things that we have to do. And then uh, Viante, just, I think just the second miss start in, in two years and only six minutes, it, was something uh, bugging him or uh... – you know, what's happening with uh, Viante and, and Carter both, you know, Robo, Josh Hawkinson, um, not Josh, but last year when we look at Drick and Robo and Malachi, those guys at number one, number two on the scouting report. And then you had Carter and V that kind of just did their thing. And they could float and they could fly up and down. Uh, Drick had us a lot faster last year. And at 6'8 point guard, he could throw over the top. So you could defend and get those guys out and run. They got a lot of looks last year. Well, now they're on the scouting reports of shooters and do not give them a look. And they can't. They, it's hard for them to get open. So we looked at the minutes, production, and all that stuff. And we made the decision, even in this game, if you give Jazz 25 minutes, he's going to have stats. Because he's big enough to defend, he can score, he can shoot threes, he can get to the hole, he can put it down. So it's more going to be about who we're playing against and the rhythm of the game we're in. And those guys have to sacrifice a little bit as those guys, a Marvin Cannon starts to come, Jazz Kuntz starts to come, here comes A2 now. So I think the first thing that I look at when I look at both Carter and V, we're just better. We're a lot better this year. So the, the minutes are decreased because you got better guys around everybody and some of those guys were able to create their own shot versus me going to get them shots. Guys can create their shots even against good athletic teams. That's what you're seeing in Marvin. You can see it in Jazz. Obviously, Robo can. CJ can. They can create their shots. It's very difficult for V and Carter to do. They've got to get it by running the floor, getting out and spreading the ball, playing defense, getting stops, and getting out and running. So if you're not getting stops, if a team is shooting 50-something percent on you, there ain't going to be a lot of transition buckets for those guys to beat people down the floor. Teams seem loose, look like they had great energy during warm-ups. Just looking at that 11-0 start, like you said, is it the attention to detail, the little things that really just sort of define that stretch? This is about the time last year, the last year's team started to grow and take off. I'm not saying this team is there yet. Uh, this team has had to go through a lot to find itself and, and grow together and play together and learn how to play as a team, sharing the ball, playing defense, all the things that come along with that, giving up minutes and all those things. And it, sometimes, again, the, the littlest thing can knock you out of rhythm. And that could be on the floor, off the court, in the locker room, in practice, whatever it is. The key thing for me is they hung in there. And you see a team, again, that doesn't have quit in it. In fact, Guys individually, again, are merging in front of your eyes. They've just got to do it collectively now. CJ was off his game tonight. Okay, We needed him on his game. We needed Robo on his game. Uh, we knew A2 was going to come to life in this crowd. Jazz gave us a great lift. Where's Marvin? We need Marvin on his game. V, if they're all there together, uh, this is where we need to be. A lot of these experienced teams, more teams are more experienced. They're a lot more together at game time and throughout the course of the game. We tend to go up and down a little bit, and, and you can't do that at this level. The teams are too good.